beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You can't believe the song that I'm hearing in my spirit. Oh, 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 Hallelujah. Hold on, hold on, guys. Don't, don't mind me. Um. It's spiritual. Listen, listen. You know, if you are not spiritual, sometimes you will think we're just playing here. The Bible says the spirit and the bride tells the word to come. Are we together? So... The spirit hears what the word wants to do. So when the spirit says come, the bride must echo it too and say come. So you are reflecting what the spirit is saying. If he says come, you say come too. You are an echo. So if there is a sound of melody and thanksgiving, I'm only a conduit. Trust me, it's because someone's breakthrough. Someone's lifting. You can feel motivated and just sit down. But... For someone else, he knows that this, this is not... Can we sing that song? We're going to sing that song and we're going to dance to the glory of God. Are you ready? Let's get the devil mad! Hey! Oh, 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 oh.
foolishness listen hold on hold on hold on god uses the foolish things just this two three minutes praise you may think that it was just an entertainment or some youthful things but no it was the key to someone's hallelujah hallelujah we are going to shout one more time. Listen, hold on. You have shouted. Calm down. Relax. I know when the Spirit of God is behind what is happening. I can assure you that we are a sensitive people to the Spirit. Listen, listen. Calm down. Please relax. Now, this shout is not an ordinary shout. Listen to me. I'm speaking to you. There is an anointing on the shout. And this is a shout of warfare. Listen. This is a shout of breakthrough. This is a shout of lifting. This is a shout that will turn captivities around. Such an anointing. I pray that we'll be able to do something today, honestly. The waters have been stirred. The waters has been stirred. The waters has been stirred. Do you know why God does these things? Let me tell you. Some of the people you see under the anointing, it's not just impartation. The prophetic word of the Lord is coming upon their lives. Some of them you see under the anointing is direction. Some of you, the fact that you are not under the anointing, you may think you are not receiving anything. No, there's no such thing as that. The moment the word is coming, it's just that the reaction of the word of God upon the human spirit differs. Sometimes the impact of the word upon your spirit, that's what you see, just carries people literally because the word of God is living. Is that not what your Bible teaches? It is living. Living things move. Living things, I mean, they, they have a form. They can be felt. Hallelujah. If there is nothing to learn tonight, just the fact that the possibilities in God, listen, the possibilities in God are only limited by our level of alignment. Not God's power. I was not born like this. Not God's power. Please listen. God chooses to speak to people in different ways. He can speak and communicate through his servant. He can speak through situations and circumstances. He can speak through signs and wonders. What you see are not just miracles. They are called signs and wonders. Why does he do this? To the end that we will believe him, we will trust him. Someone who is coming to Koinonia for the first time with all his, you know, knowledge about God would probably be seated now wondering. I mean, you are seated close to someone 
and you're watching God do these mighty things before them, how could you say it's a lie? I have made you too small in my heart. Oh, forgive me. And I have believed in a lie that you are unable to help me. But now, oh Lord. I see my Lord Heal my heart And show yourself strong And in my heart And with this song Oh Lord Be magnified Sing it from the depth of your heart. Be magnified, oh Lord. Be magnified, oh Lord. You are high in the heavens. And there is nothing you can't do. Say na 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 na. Oh Lord. Sing it one more time from the depth of your heart. Be magnified. Be magnified, oh Lord. Be magnified, oh Lord. You are highly and forever. And there is nothing you can do. Oh Lord. prophesy to them as the Holy Spirit has put in my spirit a new beginning a new beginning in your spiritual walk with God the Lord is putting in you a fresh appetite for the things of the spirit is putting in you a fresh appetite that will cause you to desire him above and beyond anything and the Lord is saying that as you give him your time and give him your attention, he will use you mightily. He will use you mightily. He will use you mightily. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's sit down. Let's try to study something. Wherever we stop. Are we together now? Um... I will start wherever we stop. We can easily continue next week. Just be sensitive. I believe that a lot more impartations will happen even as I teach. One of the things that I've seen, especially recently, ushers, that gentleman you are holding, hold on, he needs to be delivered. Just, just don't worry, he will go. But as you were lifting him, I didn't see him free. Lord, let him be free. In the name of Jesus, that gentleman there, I curse every devil. He came for koinonia, and I speak to that spirit. No matter how long you have prevailed over his destiny, you must let him go. This is a place of freedom. It's a place of emancipation. And Lord, I declare complete freedom for him. In Jesus' name. God bless you.
there's, there's been a lot of confusion in the body of Christ um, even among matured believers personally I've had to take out time to study this subject and is the subject of discerning the will of God please pay attention what I'm teaching you now is very powerful very powerful one of the areas of confusion in our lives and in the body of Christ is the inability to accurately discern the will of God for our lives hence confusion even among the most matured of believers there are so many of us who are unable to make progress in different areas of our lives because of our inability to accurately discern the will of God I have taken out time in recent times to study this subject because I believe that is useful in my own life and in the body of Christ and I think that which I will share will bless you It's a very broad subject but wherever we stop because I want us to pray hallelujah I want us to really pray so there's been confusion Lord should I stay in Zaria or should I be in Abuja Lord should I do this should I do that the inability to create a system around our lives that helps us to discern what we believe God is communicating there are people right now who have gotten married they love God but in their minds they believe that their marriages were not according to the will of God are we together please pay attention this is very important there are people today who have been in regions where they believe it's not the will of God there are people who are in all kinds of confusion and these things can create a lot of tenseness a lot of worry um, is there a system in God by which a man can accurately discern the will of God are we together because the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 6 when you read from verse 10 Jesus teaching the disciples how to pray he told them that the kingdom of God only comes when and if his will is being done are we together so he ties the manifestation of the kingdom of God to his will not your will in fact we see how much Jesus Christ so desired the will of the father to be done this is what he said in Gethsemane he said father if it be possible this is my will now take this cup off me nevertheless not my will but your will be done there are so many lives that are in a state of perpetual dissatisfaction some is almost like a stigma and a guilt they carry for the rest of their life because they feel that at one point or the other they did not accurately discern the will of God businesses jobs marriages ministries there are many pastors who believe that they wrongly went to certain ministries they just felt that no I did not hear God well and the sad part of it listen is that there are people who took actions based on what at the time they were taking the actions they perceived and believed it to be the will of God is God helping us tonight so at the time they applied for the job at the time they went abroad for instance at the time they did what they did they believed and perceived at that time that it was the will of God so part of the things that I'm going to be discussing today is what exactly is the will of God what are the dimensions to the will of God can the will of God change are we together 
this is very important it will make us mature and it will make us be able to walk circumspectly hallelujah because your advancement in life and my advancement in life will be tied to my understanding the will of God part time and the ability to take steps in that direction did you know I discovered especially recently that believers are not so rebellious if they know what the will of God is they have the stamina to follow along the challenge usually and largely is that the will of God is not known and so men are left in limbo as to what directions to take in their career in their lives and there have been all kinds of teaching and theories about the will of God so pay attention hallelujah the word logos write it down please l-o-g-o-s is the word that is translated in John chapter 1 verse 1 as word w-o-r-d is the word logos so when the Bible says in the beginning was the word the word there is the word logos and the word logos means the thoughts of a man please write it down the thoughts the thinking of a man the word logos means the ideas of a man the thoughts of a man the ideas of a man number three the word logos also means the desire or the intention of a man so when we talk about the word logos we mean number one the thoughts of a man number two the ideas of a man number three the desires or the intention of a man then number four the communications of a man the speakings of a man which is consistent with what he's thinking the speakings of a man for most people is only number four that we know so every time we say the word of God what comes to our mind is just the communications the speakings of God that is correct but the Bible says out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks it says for I know the thoughts Jeremiah 29 11 please give it to us Jeremiah 29 11 it says for I know the thoughts that I think so we see that it does not start with God speaking it starts with God thinking are we together Jeremiah 29 11 for I know the thoughts that I think towards you say yet the Lord right thoughts of good or of peace and not of evil right to bring you a what? A future and an expected end. Not just an end. An expected end. I know the thoughts that I think towards you said the Lord. They are thoughts of good or thoughts of peace. So God is thinking. Now listen. The will of God represents his idea, his desire. Are we together? his thoughts for a man for a people that's the will of God so when we talk about the will of God there's no mysticism around it it's a communication of God's desire his intent his idea on that subject matter or on your life the will of God represents his thoughts his idea his desire for your life or for whatever subject it is that you're considering now i want you to know something about the will of god listen the will of god is applicable only as far as his purposes are concerned this is very important the will of god is applicable only as far as his purposes are concerned meaning that anything that does not directly um, culminate to the birthing of the purposes of God 
his will of his will is not committed there you are not going to hear god's opinion over a matter that is not directly tied to the advancement of his kingdom are we together let me give you an instance i can't remember what i ate today but i can assure you that it was not god that told me to eat it are we together if i decide to take this water now it was not the holy spirit that spoke to me are we together because comp whether i take swan water or um ragolis or whatever it is that activity does not in any way interrupt the advancement of god's kingdom are we together so the will of god in terms of his sovereign desire is not committed to act there he gave man a will also follow me now the will of man is also useful as far as our work in this kingdom is concerned so there are two wills here there is the will of god or what I call the sovereign will of God because there are different theological explanations about the will of God there is what according to theologians when you read Romans chapter 12 when you read um, um, from verse 1 and 2 verse 1 specifically right it talks about uh, verse 2 sorry it talks about the good the perfect the acceptable will of God that's not my subject of discussion today those are just theological understandings and there is a place for them but my my assignment is to help us understand how to discern the will of god to ask god whether you should bob your hair or not is silly because according to his wisdom that matter is within the jurisdiction of your human will to solve are you getting what i'm saying now whether I bab or I don't bab, as far as my assignment and the advancement of the kingdom as committed to me is concerned, it is inconsequential. So really God does not care. But for Samson, it was a serious issue because his babbing or no babbing contained the secret to his strength which made him a judge over Israel. And so because of that, God had to put his mouth even in the issue of his hair. So God is only committed and he will manifest his will along the dimensions where the advancement of his kingdom is concerned. Do you understand? This is very important. The third thing I want you to know is your human will is useful and it can make decisions also that are consistent with the will of God. There is the human will in fact to be honest with you the one factor that makes us different from every other creation is that god gave us a mind and in that mind there is what we call um psychologically and theologically also will emotion intellect right the three components that make up our soul our will our emotions and then our intellect is god helping us now so in birthing the purposes of God there is a mutual interplay of the will of man and the will of God there are certain decisions please pay attention there are certain decisions where God will never allow the will of man to contribute in the decision because of the gravity of that activity with respect to his kingdom are we together there are certain activities that God will leave to the jurisdiction of man's will because regardless of what option the man takes, it will not directly affect him. Listen, if God took away the will of man, then he will be wicked because man would not be serving him willingly. So he made two trees in the Garden of Eden. Are we together? One, he called the tree of what? Life. Is that true? and the other was called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil why would god put two trees in the garden i mean he would have just annihilated everything that could cause man to fall but he put those two trees and then he told man he said man this is my option for you i want you to live eternally right and so on and so forth however of this tree do not eat it of this tree 
you can eat it freely eat of any tree and then man chose to violate the purposes of God that leads me to the next point the will of man can superimpose over the will of God God is helping us tonight the will of man can superimpose over the will of God that's not to mean the will of God is weak that's how much liberty that's how much dominion that's how much of the God class this man has been made to function an example of this according to God's divine order and predeterminate counsel the nation of Israel were never supposed to have an earthly king are we together it was God's design that his sovereignty be felt even by man and so he always wanted to be their king a nation of people who had God only as their king so that they would not be tempted to get into human worship or idolatry or any of such kinds of things but the Bible says the nation of Israel themselves they came together and they said give us a king are we together the crowning of Saul as king was never God's intention. Read your Bible. The people pressured the prophet Samuel. And he went to God and God said, well, if they want a king, so be it. And Saul became the king. And from there, different kings started coming. Is God speaking to us? Are we getting blessed? What then, brothers and sisters, is the key to accurately discerning the will of God? At what point in my decision-making process am I left to my will alone? At what point in my decision-making process should my will completely step aside? At what point in my decision-making process? Because there are things, listen, there are things that our human wills can execute and so leaving it up to God is a waste of time we may never get results in some of those areas I'll give you an instance of one of those fallacies financial prosperity for instance here's what people say if it is the will of God to bless me he will bless me you get the point now so if I am not blessed my assumption is that what it is not the will of God to bless me. So I am comfortable in poverty. I am comfortable in failure. I'm comfortable in mediocrity. And when they ask me, I say, I have a, a, a premonition in my mind that if God wants to bless me, he's so mighty, he can bless me. Are we together? Now, all through scripture, listen, there are times when we see through the character of the dealings of scripture and that's one of the importance of scripture right the bible says scripture is profitable so when we study scripture among the many things we get is we understand the character of god's dealings with man we know how god deals with man many times in scripture we see that prophets for instance prophesied as commanded is that true they prophesied as commanded you know that although um, they played a role in speaking, they did not contribute to altering what was communicated. There were times when prophets spoke, they spoke in their capacity as prophets. It was never because God said it. They stood upon the strength of their human wills and prophesied. Is that true? Hmm. The transference of leprosy from uh, what's the name of that man from naman to gehazi it was at the personal discretion of the prophet simply because the guy went and chased naman and said elisha has changed his mind he said you should give some of the money are we together so we now see that in that act at his discretion i'll give you another example when the children were laughing at elisha the Bible says by himself he called a bear out and it ate them. So we see all through scripture that the wills of men 
found expression over certain matters. Now, there are two dimensions of the will of God because that's our emphasis. There are two dimensions of the will of God I want us to discern and I want us to understand and discuss tonight very briefly and then we'll pray. Number one is what I call the written will of God. The written will of God. That means the will of God as expressed in scripture. I told us from the beginning of this discussion that the word logos is translated the thoughts of a man, his intention, his desire, his speakings. Now, look up please. The Bible is a compendium of God's dealings with man. Are we together? It is the way he has been dealing with man for many years. And this Bible, theologically speaking, we are told it contains 66 books, you know. But of course, there are lots of theological perspectives like the Apocrypha and other extra biblical texts, the books of Jasha and the Black Sea Scrolls and all of that. There are other books that um, the book of Enoch and several dealings, other books that were written by other apostles like Thomas and the rest that did not make it in the 66 books. But theologically, we accept that by the wisdom of God, that this is a compendium of what we call the Holy Scriptures as given. Are we together? Now, from Genesis to Revelation as we know, is a recorded, um, a documentation of the dealings of God with man. You see the dealings of man with, indiv the dealings of God with individuals, cities, kings, backsliders, animals, people in their, the apex of their spiritual life, people at the lowest level, the, the goal is that by studying this, among the many other things I receive, I can be able to see the synergy of God's character. Are we together? So, by my, my intimacy with the word, I come to a point where experientially, I can discern what would have been the dealings of God in this matter, Based on what he has written. It's called the written will of God. Everybody say the written will of God. Say it again. The written will of God. It says forever O Lord thy word is settled. And then it says your word is a lamp unto my feet. And a light to my path. Is that true? Very very important. It says heaven and earth will pass away. But not one jot will come out of his word. And so we believe that the scriptures are holy. They were not written by perfect men. But then the Bible says, holy men wrote it as they were moved of the spirit. So regardless of their temperament, regardless of the, the manipulations in translation, I don't want to begin to give you all the, the church history behind the formation of these 66 books because it's a lot of stories. Are we together? Certain editings in this Bible as we know, were not done by those who wrote it. It was done by a class of theologians and different people who translated the Bible and made it consumable for us. Like the King James Version, being one of the earliest versions. The story of King James is a very old story. The man who authorized that this be translated purely in English and be communicated to people. It's a long story. Are we together now? But then as we know it, because there are many people who would argue that these scriptures are not complete. And truly speaking, when you study the theological dimension of the word, you will find out that there are certain translations or communications that were an error of the translators. Are we together? It did not hold the original thoughts of those who were speaking. For instance, when you read the encounter of John the Baptist, I mean, uh, John the Revelator, where he says, the Lord speaking to him, I am Alpha and Omega. The word and Omega, there is an error in translation. There is no and. It is, I am Alpha, Omega. But the communication of um, the Old Testament was written in Hebrew and the, Greek the, the New Testament was largely written in Greek and Aramaic. So that was the communication. And sometimes in these translations, the men who did the translation themselves 
um, judge certain things based on their spiritual limitations. However, the Holy Ghost has been able to breathe upon this such that even with the imperfections, it is enough to be able to guide you to understand God. Are we together? So the imperfections in the Bible notwithstanding, they are not so grave as to confuse a Christian. Is that true? Now look up please. Before this book, this Bible as we know, was released to believers because our generation we were born and we grew knowing the Bible to be available. Is that true? But that's not the way it was in the old times. In ancient times, they were not given, you did not go home with a Bible. The Bible, as we know, were called scrolls. Are we together? And these scrolls contain the Pentateuch, the five books of Moses, called in the Hebrew, the Torah. Are we together? These five books were kept together with the prophets and other writings of these people. They were kept and uh, other documents that we call the annals of the kings, the dealings of kings, they were kept in the temple. The priests were the custodians of these scrolls because they were precious. So what would happen is that it's still practiced in the Anglican sometimes. You see that they have um, different um, pulpits and with one there is a big Bible that is permanently left there. If you are taking the first reading or the second reading, you don't come with your own Bible. You just come and it's open. You look for the scripture. You read and go back. That was the way it was in Luke chapter 4 for Jesus. Because the Bible says that one time he came to the temple and it was given to him. He didn't come with it. Are we together? It was given to him the prophecy of Esaias, the messianic prophecy, Isaiah 61 was the messianic prophecy. It was speaking about Jesus, but then prophetically to the church. Is God helping us now? And so when um, Jesus began to read that one, the Bible says he folded the scroll when he finished and kept it back and said, this day, right, is this fulfilled in your ears? So the first operation or the first dimension to discerning the will of God is the understanding of the character of God as communicated through scripture. That's what I mean by the written will of God. The written will of God entails understanding his character, not necessarily his unique instructions, his character to know how God would have operated over certain matters. Now, listen, whether you read the Old Testament, you read the New Testament, you read the law, the prophets, the gospels, the epistles, or the book of Revelation, it doesn't matter what dimension. Every book of the Bible contains um, either directly or prophetic representations of God's dealings with man. Now, when I study the Bible, listen, what is happening to me is that I'm bringing my spirit to oneness with the way God does his things. Are we together? That's what we call righteousness. There is the gift of righteousness, but there is the operation of righteousness where you understand God's ways of doing things. Are we together? Then the second dimension of this written word are direct instructions that are written in the Bible. Direct instructions. There are certain opinions of God he did not live in the dark. It was clearly stated. One example. There is nobody who gets up right now. A man wanting to marry a man. Are we together? And then he's trying to pray or find out. Is it really the will of God for me to marry James? Or to marry Junior? Or to marry whoever? The will of God on that matter was not left in the dark. Therefore, shall a man, a what? Leave his father and mother, comma, and cleave to his. Are we together? And they too 
shall become one flesh. So two men scripturally cannot become one flesh. Two women cannot become one flesh. Are we together? So you do not attempt to use any other strategy to seek the will of God on that matter. The will of God is written, is clear. It's up to you to align with that will or rebel against it. Let me tell you something about the will of God as written in scripture. God does not necessarily punish people. His laws were designed with consequences attached to them. So, violating those principles expose you by default to certain things. It says, he that breaks the hedge. It didn't say, I will bring a serpent. He that breaks the hedge, the serpent will what? Strike. Bring ye all the tithes into my storehouse that there may be meat. That is my will. I want to increase you, but this is what I have put. And if you refuse, you can choose to refuse. But the moment you choose rebellion, you also choose the consequence that comes with it. The devourer. So God will never cast the devourer out of it. The devourer is roaming around. Your own assignment is to exempt him from your vicinity. But he is there. Are you getting what I'm saying now? The written will of God. Now, let me tell you the truth. There are many aspects of our lives where by faithfully studying the Bible or being open to quality teachings of the word of God, we are brought into an experiential comprehension of the will of God. All that we teach that we call the laws of the kingdom are a communication of God's will to prosper us. Now you may be asking, is it God's will for me to prosper? You go to the Bible, right? I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Say it who? Not a prophet, the Lord. Thoughts of good and thoughts of peace to bring you Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate during day and night that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein. Then shalt thou make your way prosperous and thou shalt have good success. So is my prosperity left in the hands of God? No. It left the hands of God since. He said thou shalt make your way prosperous and thou shalt have good success. Can I go to heaven poor? Yes. Will I live in heaven on earth? No. Are we together now? The will of God. Now, let me tell you something. Every time you desire to know the will of God, the first place to find the will of God, I know why I'm taking our time to teach this. Because when I talk about the second dimension, then we're going to talk about a lot of other things if there's time. If there's no time, we'll continue next week. The word of God or scripture is the primary instrument for discerning the will of God. Please write it down. Scripture is the primary instrument given to men by God to discern the will of God. Your chances of walking in error are greatly minimized when you consult the bible first as the basis for your comprehension of the will of god concerning a matter i say this because our generation is gradually drifting away from our perception of the will of god as written in scripture to other extra biblical methods and while they are useful they are only secondary and inferior as a matter of fact to the written word of god Say the written will of God. Look up please. Do you know why many Christians are largely confused almost about everything? Let me admit to you that many Christians including preachers don't study their Bibles. They don't study their Bibles. If they want to teach on faith, they just go online and Google faith. Any material that comes out, they just pick the scriptures for the teaching. But they don't settle down to study the Bible. Not studying the Bible will keep you in the dark as regards God's will that has already been written. There are so many people years ago, 
when we were a lot fewer before koinonia started um all of us used to participate in holy ghost baptism you know we used to pray for people every night that was how we socialized by getting people filled with the holy spirit and um i remember most times people would come and they would complain and say i wasn't filled i was prayed for in church and i was not filled with the holy spirit the pastor was even angry with me and he said maybe i'm possessed or whatever it is or i should go and come back but that recognition i remember one of the key things god gave me as a revelation was the fact that he desired for everybody to be filled with the holy spirit with evidence of praying in tongues i searched this thing scripture after scripture until i came to a point where i was absolutely convinced that everyone should be filled with the holy spirit with evidence of speaking in tongues regardless of denominations and that culminated into a dimension of confidence in me because every time I prayed for people, regardless of their hardness, I knew and I expected them to be filled. You see, when the will of God is not known, your confidence shakes. When the will of God is not known over any matter, your confidence shakes. The word of God was given to us as an instrument of discernment. To help us understand his perspectives quickly let's look at the second dimension the second dimension to the discernment of the will of God is his revealed will or the second dimension if you want to look at the will of God his revealed will revealed will revealed will revealed will and the, the nature and the operation of this will, please look up, is on matters where you directly would not get a direct word for from scripture. Are you getting what I'm saying? Issues that concern maybe business, issues that concern marriage, issues that concern certain things that are personal and unique to you. Now, there are times that you will need to make decisions. Please listen. And these decisions, you may not find a direct scripture so that you can get clarity as to what God will want you to do. There's no place written in scripture that says that you should remain in Zaria and be planted in Zaria. Are we together now? You can find scripture about Isaac remaining in, in a land sowing and you can find scripture about people remaining in a land and dying so you see that's confusing on different occasions people did the same thing let me tell you something about the bible that's why we need this second dimension there are a lot of things that seemingly look conflicting about the will of god that's why we need his revealed will is that true The revealed will of God communicates his unique desire over the personal issue of concern in your life. The revealed will of God communicates his personal desire. You must understand this. It is unique to you. Look up. Let me just go ahead of myself very fast. The unique will of God for me may not be the unique will of God for you. It is dangerous to transfer the communications of God as given to you to someone else because his revealed will comes tailor-made to address the unique situation in your life. Are you getting what I'm saying now? For instance, in the meeting when we were about to start, you saw us doing a lot of foolish things. It was the reception, my discernment on the will of God. He wanted to touch people and bring breakthroughs and the method through which it will be carried out was also revealed are we together the moment i received it all that it was left was that i obeyed and then god brought the performance now if you get up and copy what i did and go to a meeting tomorrow and tell everybody shout they may shout and jump up and down and they pass a paper to you and say you have five more minutes you have wasted time and wasted the people's time and then you are angry the revealed will of God is for our personal advancement. 
you do not create doctrines out of the revealed will of God to you because the revealed will of God to you is as a result of so many things there are many factors just follow me we are going somewhere so we have established the fact that there are two dimensions to the will of God there is the written will of God as communicated in scripture the written will of God does not have exceptions everybody who must walk with God in that area must subscribe to what he has said God will not create an exemption to the rule just for you as far as it is communicated in the Bible but the revealed will of God describes his unique communication to you based on your personal need are we together am I are we are we following together please hallelujah an example of situations that will require the revealed will of God number one I'm giving you a few examples you don't have to write them but number one imagine that Shadrach is trusting God now for where to settle down as a man I hope you know that if you do not love God and you don't know God usually you work with your instincts and guess your way around if it's not God's will, you pay for it. If your instinct suddenly leads you to God's will, you enjoy breakthrough. Most people use instincts. And instincts are a provision from God. But when with the knowledge he knows now, he wants to discern the will of God. You can take your Bible and open it and not directly find where it is written. Or Shadrach wants to ask, oh God, when do you want me to settle down maritally? There's nowhere in the Bible written where you will find and Shadrach married 2016. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So at that point, you will need to tap into another source of supply to communicate to you what God wants. Let me tell you something. Brothers and sisters, I submit to you, it pays to walk in the will of God. Don't ever let anybody preach you into believing that you can compromise the will of God and make progress in life. No matter what price it takes to be confident that you are walking in the will of God, pay it. It pays. Knowing the will of God gives us confidence. That's why we cast out devils. Because his will is communicated to us. That's why we walk in the anointing. We saw it, we read it, we understood it, we believed it. But the confusion in the body of Christ now is on the revealed will of God. And it's a very technical dimension of walking with God. And so I came up with a few ways. I'm going to give us very quickly... Three ways, three ways to discern the revealed will of God. Three major ways. There may be many, you may find them in many textbooks, but three major ways. To discern the will of God. Ready? Number one, peace and joy write it down believe me brothers and sisters don't trivialize what you are hearing peace and joy the bible says look up it says the kingdom of god when it is manifested it is not in meat and drink right but it is in righteousness peace and joy in the holy ghost Many believers have walked out of the will of God, the revealed will of God, because they neglected the peace of God. The Bible says the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, let it garrison your heart. That means the moment I'm about to take a decision or I'm trusting God for a revelation over a decision and your peace supernaturally ceases and there is no joy let me tell you joy is not happiness hear me there are times you will be weeping and yet have joy joy don't confuse joy with happiness happiness is circumstantial if i give you one thousand naira, i expect you to be happy not necessarily joyful There's a song that we used to sing, I still have joy. I still have joy. 
After all I've been through, I still have joy. I still have peace. I still have peace. After all I've been through, I still have peace. So joy and peace, let me tell you, there is no man who is not born again who can have peace. He says, peace I give you. Peace is only truly experienced. Not, it's, it's not just the word shalom. Shalom just means a state of rest, right? Nothing missing, nothing broken, no. That's not the word that is used there. He said, the best way to describe that kind of peace was a description of the psalmist. He makes me lie down in still waters. Peace and joy. There are many of us, look up please, as pastors, as leaders, as individuals, as business people, we have been praying and trusting God over certain decisions or we are on our way executing certain decisions and your peace is lifted. Let me tell you, the absence of peace is the absence of the presence of the kingdom which is the absence of the will of God being done because connecting these two scriptures the will of God done his kingdom comes and his kingdom is made of peace and joy so wherever the will of God is, finds expression there is peace and there is joy say amen. amen the peace of God that surpasses all understanding he says is to garrison our hearts praise the Lord so a lady is about to get married please listen what I'm saying is very serious I want us to pay attention God put this in my heart and I believe it's a blessing for all of us are we together you may be born again you may be tongue talking now watch this um, my dear come let me use any of you come now watch this this lady watch this please I come and ask this lady out as an anointed man and she loves God. She knows I'm a responsible person. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm using a case study now to show you how to communicate and to discern the revealed will of God. And then all of a sudden, she wants to tell me yes. Now listen, but in her place of prayer, something is happening to her peace and her joy. Let me tell you, when your peace and joy leaves especially when there is no physical reason for it it's a language in the realm of the spirit don't you ever ignore it when you lack explanation as to why you do not have peace over a matter it's a sign to go to god no matter what you are doing stop where you are and find out i don't know why i started with the issue of marriage but let's continue god is speaking listen listen carefully do you know that this lady may have her peace and joy being threatened every time she, she thinks of saying yes to me now it's up to her to numb the peace and bind it and cast it and get married to me and then after many years what her peace was saying later plays out have you seen people who say, I knew it? Every time they get into trouble, they say, honestly, and I knew this thing. God was telling me, I didn't listen. Let me tell you something. The language of peace and joy are standard spiritual languages. Standard spiritual languages of communication. God is helping somebody this night. Now listen, do you know that God may be speaking to this lady and say, there are three things have been afraid of answering me based on what she's feeling can mean three things number one it can mean that as good as i am as good as she is we are not the will of god for ourselves it's as simple as that you don't have to be bad number two listen it can be that i am of god for her however there are issues in my life that can implicate our marriage in the days to come. So the peace refuses to leave you until that issue is dealt with. Assuming there is a covenant and I come from a family where all the women that marry men die. That's what is about to happen to that lady. And so God is that lack of peace. God is saying this may be your will but there are issues to resolve. Now it's not the issue of marriage. There is a spiritual issue or for instance 
God forbid, but God may be speaking and say, Joshua Selman, if you marry this lady now, she may have a problem with barrenness. There is a spirit that is roaming around this life that may cause barrenness. And he's saying, I am seizing your peace so that you will deal with that issue. Have you not seen people when they are delivered, they can get up and fall in love afresh. It's like after that deliverance, they get up and they are ready to move because the barrier has given way. We ignore these things and we pay for it. Are we together? A businessman is about to get into trouble and he's calling you to come and partner with him and you love him sincerely but every time you want to move something in your spirit just tells you hold up and you just say no way anything that will stop my breakthrough you see let me tell you don't just be too scientific with God there are times you must maintain your spirituality at all times one little communication of peace can help you there are many ladies as you are looking at me right now you have gotten into needless troubles if only you listen to the prompting of peace and joy. Peace was speaking, your eyes were seeing money and you followed your way to the grave. Are we together? Peace. Peace. I remember one time, a lady who was getting married, they had even gone very far, very far as in it was almost that time. And the lady called me and was crying her life and said for over three days she had not slept. She said it's as if she's entering hellfire. Literally, you get up. Sometimes she said she can shake physically. I said something is wrong. Run to your pastor. Go and talk to him. She said, ah, but too many people have been committed. I said, who are the people? Who are the people? They would dance on that day and leave you. Let me tell you something. Be strict about walking in the will of God. I'm only using marriage as a case study, but it applies to every area of your life. Please, I love you and I want to be your roommate. And the moment you, you move something in you, just says no. And you are wondering, ah, but this brother or this sister is, I mean, the sweetest person as can ever be. They don't have to be bad for your peace to leave you. We are talking of the will of God here. The will of God is as designed by God. Many of us think that when our peace and our joy leaves over an issue, it simply means it's wrong. You want to travel and your peace and joy leaves. It doesn't mean you are going to have accident. You will arrive safely. It's just not consistent with the will of God for your life. Danger does not have to happen to prove that a thing is not the will of God for your life. It can happen as planned, which is even more dangerous. Is God speaking to someone here? Peace and joy. Number two. Dreams, visions, and prophetic experiences. Dreams, visions, and prophetic experiences. I wish I didn't have to talk about this because I can spend, thank you my dear, I can spend a whole night vigil talking about this a whole night vigil talking about this dreams visions do you know satan has so metamorphosed in his technology of manipulating dreams and visions right now to an extent that many people are even afraid of their dreams and visions the devil is a liar in the name of jesus christ let me tell you something anything that is written in the bible is still being used by god is still a valid tool I know that there are all kinds of perversions. There are many of us, if you hear dream and vision, resentment comes in your heart because almost 95% of everything you have seen as dreams and visions either did not happen in your life or backfired on you. So because of that, you hate dreams and visions. That's not true. The Bible says, Joel chapter 2, it says, I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Are we together? And then it says, your young men shall what? See visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. So visions and dreams and supernatural experiences, though being perverted, is still a tool that God uses to communicate his revealed will to people. If I begin to tell you how and why dreams are perverted, we'll have to go into the subject of demonology, the operation of demons. And I'm not sure our time is, is, is up practically, so we'll just leave it for another time. But let me tell you something. Dreams can 
be manipulated. Visions can be manipulated. Prophetic experiences can be manipulated. However, however, listen to me. There is a way you walk with God to an extent that your dreams and visions become express revelations. I know people today who are walking effortlessly in the will of God. Thanks to dreams, visions, and solid, notice my use of word, solid prophetic experiences. Not opinions. Solid prophetic experiences. Not, oh God, if it's your will, let boss carry us after koinonia. That's not a wise that's not a wise riddle that you play with God. A lot of us do a lot of stupid things. Lord, if it is your will, as I'm coming out, Charles must tell me good evening. That means I should, I should go home after exams. You know, all those kind of things are not wise. We, we fool ourselves when we do that. Look at me. When Herod was planning to kill baby Jesus... Did you know that it was a dream? Huh? Imagine if Joseph got up and said, ah, that's a dream, kill with Jesus. Jesus, they would, have, they, would have, they would have butchered him into pieces. The only thing is he wouldn't have died because he's the word. Are you getting the point now? But he would have sabotaged his agenda because he was wearing a human body. He was in all ways tempted like us, meaning he could face our limitations. A dream! Joseph was going to divorce Mary. He found out that Mary was pregnant and Joseph said, you too, you know, I'm not part of this. I don't know what happened to you. I'm about to leave you quietly. The Bible says he was going to leave her quietly and it was in a dream. The angel said, uh-uh, do not be afraid to take this woman, right? It's this and that. For that which is in her, that holy thing, it shall be called the son of the highest. And on the strength of that dream, Joseph came and said, no problem. He continued with her dreams dreams the salvation of Egypt was in a dream the king slept and he had a dream seven seasons of plenty seven seasons of lack he got up with that dream someone interpreted the dream built a strategy around the dream and salvaged the destiny of a nation are we together dreams and visions are real in fact, the salvation of we, the Gentiles, happened through a vision. Is that true? I hope you know before Acts chapter 10, no Gentile was saved. It was the Jews. Right? It was in Acts chapter 10 when Peter was caught up in a trance. And then something came down from heaven. Imagine if Peter saw the trance and said, God forbid. No Cornelius house, no salvation of the Gentiles. All of us will be going to hellfire. We're spiritual Jews, but physically we're Gentiles, I assure you. It was a salvation that happened in Cornelius' house that spread to us. Dreams, visions. There are certain decisions I've taken over my life, over this ministry by the grace of God, that were on the strength of dreams and visions. God continues to show me visions today, directions communications of the spirit so it is one way to know the revealed will of God now let me tell you something very quickly about dreams and visions you don't have them at will you have to learn this because through witchcraft and Scientology you can be manipulated to start having and seeing things at will that is rubbish and jargon it is exclusively the ministry of the Holy Spirit communicating things to you according to the purposes of God not according to your desire so whether God reveals to me through a vision a prophetic experience a dream it is I can ask him right and then pending on the gravity of the confirmation he can use multiple spiritual channels however it is exclusively of the Spirit my calling to ministry, the peace and the joy, the conviction, and all of that. But then, visions, dreams, prophetic experiences have added to support my conviction. And today, millions of people are benefiting from that. The last 
dimension of the speakings of God over his revealed will is the prophetic. Now, I said prophetic experiences before. I mean, just any supernatural experience, but the prophetic. Let me say that and then we'll pray and tie it up. Have you been blessed? Listen carefully, please. The prophetic. Now, we just finished dealing on the subject of the body of Christ. And I told us, remember our teaching last week at Charity and Faith, that every provision about the will of God or every provision about the possibilities of God are embedded in the body. Is that true? Remember the teaching. It may not be at work in your life. It may not be a dimension open to you as a person, a unique member in the body. However, that possibility is where? In the body. Is that true? Now, there are people scattered all around that God has committed and he's still trusting with the gifts of prophecy and others being called into the prophetic and all kinds of prophetic and apostolic offices that are helping the body communicate what is supposed to be the will of God. So we see from the Bible, Agabus was one of the prophets who God used to speak to Paul. Is that true? Saul and, 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 and all of that and, and then to speak to him and all through scripture we see that God has used prophets to speak to people the prophetic is real and it can give direction the prophetic is real and can give direction the prophetic is a system and a ministry that God designed to help men access the mind of God and access the will of God there are times here by the grace of God that we have called people through the agency of the prophetic and communicated words for them. I have counseled people and communicated things to them. Um, by the grace of God, they have run with these things and their lives have changed. So the prophetic is very powerful in communicating the revealed will of God, the unique will of God. However, however, let me say this and then we'll tie it up for tonight. There is... Or there are two big limitations to the prophetic in themselves. Number one is that the accuracy of reception and interpretation, write it. The accuracy of reception and interpretation is subject to the man of God's personal word content. The accuracy, listen, of both reception of the vision or the word and its communication is largely subject to the man of God's degree or his word content. Now please look up. This is very important. I was teaching in Enugu and, um, and, and, and I said this to them. I think it was during the minister's session. I told them that the danger with the prophetic is this. The manifestation of the gifts of the spirit, whether prophetic or any other manifestation will never replace the place of getting the word of God seated in your heart. Are we together? Because I told you that one of the things we receive from the word of God is the character of God. Say the character of God and the operation of God. When you study the Bible, you know how God works. So with that knowledge of how God works, you will be able to interpret prophetic happenings in the light of the way God works. But most of the largely apostolic and prophetic voices that we've had, especially in recent times, are men and women who either transited from idol worship. Are we together? They also had their prophetic dimensions. And then they now stepped into the prophetic. And so there is that corruption because of the absence of the word of God. That inability to process spiritual things from the lens of the word of God is responsible for the error in both reception and communication. Remember when Jesus spoke to the man and his eyes were opened. The Bible says he laid hands on him and he said, what do you see? The man did not see correctly. He said he saw men like trees. So if you were to ask that man to prophesy, he would say this tree, stand up. Was that a tree? It was what his eyes saw. Son of man, what seest thou? An almond tree. You have seen correctly. 
meaning a man can see wrongly that does not mean you are of the devil but that it is your word content that accelerates your degree of reception number one and two your interpretation do you know that if I do not understand the scripture for instance God can open my eyes right now and I can look at Shalhoma are we together let's assume for instance that there is witchcraft in her family now I have not studied the Bible to understand the dimensions of the operations of demon spirit in the lives of people any vision I see like that I will call it demon possession because that is what my understanding has given me so when I see a spiritual thing wrong with her life instead of separating it from her I now look and say shall and stand up you are possessed based on what I'm seeing you are possessed and I pray for her and she starts manifesting and she will go back wondering what her prayer and fasting has done and she's now saying so wow, I cannot understand I love God I am born again I'm filled with the Holy Spirit what is this one that I'm possessed again the name is not possession my inability to understand the word of God is what made me name it possession but the recipient now has received this as possession are you seeing the number one error with the prophetic so most apostles and prophets don't study the Bible because they think they are open and inclined to perceptions in the realm of the spirit and they feel if, if I can see why should I read it let me tell you something every time you attempt to operate the prophetic without the word of God your chances of dappling into witchcraft and error is very high no matter who you are you don't have to be fake the word of God is what gives they are the guidelines for operating the prophetic so you operate the prophetic within the jurisdiction of the word of God are we together if I look at Pastor Alpha and his wife, for instance, and God reveals something to me about Pastor Alpha or his wife that is quite serious, and I know is capable of destroying their marriage. Now, watch this. I am seeing a vision. Something, for instance, about Pastor Alpha and his wife. Are we together? But I also know that God is not the author of confusion. He will not come and destroy a family. That understanding will help me in the communication. I may tell the wife, please see me after service. And I discuss it personally. Are you seeing that now? My inability to understand that I can open my mouth and just say something and say it to the man and think I'm communicating prophetically. And after service, they march straight to the court and get a divorce. Courtesy, the prophetic. Are you getting what I'm saying now? There are many women that have been made to leave their husbands. So said the prophet. Madam, this your husband is, is irrecoverable. The way he has already left the things of God into witchcraft. And the solution is to leave the man. Or to tell the man the solution is to leave the woman. Including men of God. Including different kinds of people. The prophetic that compromises the character of the word is not accurate any prophetic communication that compromises the character of the word of God is not accurate it should be re-edited and reconsidered both by the communicator and the recipient any dimension even if it's from Joshua Selman if it is not consistent with the character of the word of God why am I teaching you this look at me you are going to go for meetings in your lifetime you are going to meet great and mighty men, prophets of God. Are we together? And they are going to speak to you at one point or the other. They are not fake. They are not devils. But you must have an, a discernment. The moment you look at a prophet, you should have discernment to process the spiritual level. Separate the gift from his spiritual growth. That he's operating in the prophetic does not mean he's matured spiritually. It's a gift. Are we together? So chances are that he can speak to you and you know what part of the prophecy to receive and what part to throw into the dustbin. Otherwise, you will be in trouble. 
and then there are certain aspects of prophetic communications that are true but they are coming to you so that you will change it not just sit down helplessly and make it happen are we together yesterday i was when we were um, these guys did not even know i'm sure they'll be surprised to hear it now we're coming back and when we're going to the airport to come back you know someone called me and um, she was telling me that she had a dream and she saw a plane crash you know this and that a plane crash and, and truly truly this is somebody that I know that the, the word of the Lord I know that she has a track record truly truly when she sees something or says something it happens and so she was afraid she said are you people going you know this and that and that and I said yes and uh, I know what imagine that I did not have the bank of the word of God till today I'll be in Enugu waiting for the day another word will come and say now the road is clear but now what the person saw may not be wrong but there is a more sure word of prophecy are we together now so that may be the plan of the devil for me to die yesterday in the air are we together but I knew that if I enter it will not crash now that's another level of conviction it's not about bragging my strength is not on a, the written word of God that is more exalted above his name and any prophecy because we see in part and we prophesy in part. Are we together now? Yeah. A man of God once prophesied to a woman, a very accurate man of God, young man, and all of that I, I don't know which of the cities he is in and all of that he prophesied to a woman and um, he told her she was going to have a baby girl and the woman was trusting God for a baby boy she had sown seeds and this she went to God and she said Lord I, I respect and honor that prophet but it's a baby boy I tell you there is a solid bouncing baby boy came out look let me tell you the part of scripture you believe is the part that works for you if someone tells me today you are going to die it may be true God opened his eyes to see demons plotting on how to die. <laughs> I'll, 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 go and, I'll go and die. But I'm not even going to pray about it. I'm going to go home quietly and sit down. Even if the devil drives my car, he will take me home. Yeah. Are you getting what I'm saying? You must, you must have a settled... Now, don't brag for nothing. I know the burning bush I have seen that gives me the audacity to make that statement. I've seen death eyeball to eyeball. I know it. I know how it looks. It knows how I look. So it's not that I'm just talking for nothing. Honestly. Tomorrow we're off to Ibadan again. Who knows what the devil is planning this night? Maybe they are planning and say, okay, we lost our chance. Now is the next chance. They are free to plan. The Bible never stopped them from planning. The power of performance is where the sovereignty of God comes in. He says, surely they will gather. But because their gathering is not of the Lord, they will scatter. Otherwise, you will land into trouble. Someone will look at you and say, oh, you do not have a fallopian tube. Based on what God is revealing to me, kite, there's no fallopian tube, no child. And you go back saying, talk. The way this scene is, I will just go and adopt a child and the man who married you is regretting and angry and wondering why. But the Bible says, and God opened the womb of Leah. It's none of your business where the child will grow. Whether it's your head, wherever, let the child grow and come out after nine months. It's none of your business where the child grows. History has recorded women who gave birth to twins with no womb. Twins, not even a child. Are we together? The will of God. Finally, there is a system that God built in the body to help us grow to a point of discernment where we can receive his revealed will. And that system is called praying in the spirit. Please write it down. There are not many systems to discernment. Praying in the spirit. I didn't know time had gone so much. Oh my God. 
Everybody say praying in the spirit. Say it again. Say praying in tongues. Now let me tell you something. Look up please. First Corinthians chapter 14. When you read verse 2, you read verse 4. It says, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue. Listen please believers. It says, Edifieth himself. Edifieth himself. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue. Does what? Edifieth himself. The believer who does not pray in the spirit, I guarantee you, will have a hard time discerning the revealed will of God. You can check scripture and see, but when it comes to your everyday decisions, as far as the advancement of your life is concerned, you will find out that you've not been able to build your spirit to rise beyond the level of the flesh. So the devil can manipulate your dreams. Are we together? Today, you will dream and see yourself in Abuja. Just when you, are, you want to find out the next day, you will see yourself in Ogun. The devil is playing with your mind. Because God is not an author of confusion. Are we together? Next tomorrow, you see yourself in London. After seeing yourself four times, you give up using dreams and you sit down and you don't move forward again. Satan can manipulate dreams. But brothers and sisters, there is a level to which your spirit will rise that no power of darkness will near anything that is a channel for spiritual communication in your life there is no devil who will come to me in my dreams and manipulate me no 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 even in my sleep there is a garrison of the word of god praying in the spirit praying in the spirit praying in the spirit when you cultivate the art of praying in the spirit you are not only granting access for your petitions you are not only challenging the powers that be listen you are edifying yourself and one of the ways to edify yourself is to build yourself to a point where you sustain the ability to discern many believers do not have discernment many believers do not have discernment god will want to communicate certain realities to us but our spirits are too dappled in the flesh we cannot receive the promptings of the spirit when his will is done his kingdom comes the will as written from scripture should be obeyed to the latter without any compromise but that part of the will that has to be revealed is accessed largely through discernment. Discernment will also help you to dream correctly, not dream foolishly. You are trusting God for direction, a serious direction. You have a dream and you saw yourself drinking ice cream. How does that relate to what you are laboring and fasting for? Don't laugh. In the Bible, when men slept, God showed them dreams that were consistent with their desires. But right now, dreams have been devalued because we are communicating carnally. The devil is a liar in the name of Jesus. Rise up on your feet. We are going to pray. Three quick prayer points very quickly. Three quick prayer points. Make sure you pray them with all your heart. Prayer point number one, Lord, grant me grace to be obedient to your will as revealed in scripture. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. There are dimensions of his will that has been revealed in scripture. You don't have to ask God. All you need is the grace. All you need is the grace to walk in it. Are you praying, Koinonia? Inside and outside, pray. Grant me grace. Grant me grace. It is your will for me to prosper. It's already revealed in scripture. Grant me grace to live by the principles. It is your will for me to succeed in my exams. It's revealed in scripture. Grant me grace. Grant me grace. It is your will for me to rise and be world class. May I never doubt your written will for me. Let the consciousness of what you have written in the Bible give me confidence. It is your will for me to be healed. I receive grace to never accommodate sickness in my life. 
it is your will for me to give birth grant me grace to never accommodate barrenness in my life please pray pray you are building yourself if you must fulfill destiny it will only be according to the will of God and the first dimension of his will is his written will access from scripture hallelujah 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 listen never ask God if it's his will over something that has been clearly stated in the Bible don't ever ask God if it's his will to heal you don't ever ask God if it's his will for you to live long are we together don't ever ask God if it's his will for you to prosper don't ever ask God if it's his will for your business to expand it's his written will second prayer point you're going to pray and say Lord every direction I need that I have not directly found in scripture I pray that you reveal it to me please pray every direction I need for the next level of my life for the next level of marriage relationship for the next level of business for the next level of ministry reveal it to me it is within your power Lord, use the instrument of peace and joy. Use the instrument of peace and joy. Use the instrument of dreams, visions, prophetic encounters. Lord, even use the prophetic ministry. Speak to me. Let my confusion of decades melt away with one assured direction from you. Let my confusion of decades melt away let my confusion of decades melt away let my confusion of months let my confusion of years melt away where to go what job to do what business to take who to marry how many children to have lord i believe you your revealed will i'm at a sensitive period in my life I cannot make mistakes. Pray. I need a clear direction. I cannot afford to make mistakes over my academics. I cannot afford to make mistakes over my marital destiny. I cannot afford to make mistakes over the business that I should be engaged in. I should not be at a loss because of lack of knowledge of your will over the geography the geography my location reveal your will to me oh god reveal your will to me oh god hallelujah hallelujah let me tell you many of you will return with testimonies from this teaching because so many of us right now do you know listen let me tell you do you know why many Christians don't move forward because they have been brought to the awareness that taking a step outside of the will of God will cost you so most Christians are marking time because they want to make sure they are sure of their decisions which is why you must pray because it is the devil's plan to manipulate the revealed will of God so that when you don't hear it you don't move forward are we together I'd like you to pray and say Lord build my spirit man to a point where I receive your will without error and without manipulation lift your voice and pray Build my spirit man. 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 Kaparato soto kapa shabarada baladaba. Lekete kapa shanda katalabarata. Build my spirit man. 
in the name of the Lord Jesus build my spirit man so that I can discern your will I can discern your will build my spirit man no manipulation of my dreams build my spirit man no manipulation of my visions build my spirit man no manipulation of the prophetic experiences that come to me my God and my King give me sound experiences that will convince me of your will beyond the shadow of a doubt hallelujah hallelujah in the name of Jesus Christ may the confusion over where to be located may the God of heaven settle that matter in our lives may the confusion over when to marry who to marry where to marry be settled once and for all in our lives in the name of Jesus may the confusion over what business to do and where to do it and with whom to do it be settled in the name of Jesus Christ daddy God bless you sir I want to pray for you sir so that the devil will not put stroke in your body stroke because I'm seeing this side and I'm seeing it affected and then eventually you will not be able to lift your hand and your legs and the Lord is saying he is bringing an end to captivity in this family stretch your hands and let's pray for them in the name of Jesus father step into this family right now let me tell you it doesn't take time in a minute God can wipe the tears of a family in a minute in a minute in a minute let me pray for you daddy I curse every spirit of infirmity and I set you free sir in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus every limitation in your academics is rolled away now every limitation in your academic is rolled away now every limitation in your academic is rolled away right now I'm seeing a woman, you came here, you are wearing glasses. You wore a traditional attire. You are a woman, you are fair, you are wearing glasses. Glasses. Is there someone like that, please? No, 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 no. I mean, there's, there's a woman, this is a, a married woman. You are wearing glasses. Is there someone like that, please? The Lord is revealing this to me. A married woman, where is it? You are wearing glasses. Huh? Where are the glasses? Please begin to pray. Tell the Lord to visit you and visit your family. This is why we are here tonight. Please pray. Please, please pray from the depth of your heart. There is, there is a lady... Um, one of these ladies of incomparable, incomparable, very fair. You are light skinned. I don't know her name. They used to come and greet me sometimes. Very fair, light skinned, incomparable. This incomparable beauty crew. Where are they? Come now. The Lord wants to end captivity in your family. Mama, the Lord is telling me that I should tell you that he will reward you greatly. He will reward you greatly. Please stand up. Please stand up. Please stand up. He will reward you. I need to pray for you. Your family is under serious demonic attack. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Where are you from? Benway State, sir. Eh? Benway State. Benway State, come. This is, this is the spirit of death. No, no, step down. This is the spirit of death and we must pray and take authority over it father i curse that spirit now go by the power of the holy spirit on your life 
and that of your family members in the name that is above all names I command that attack to come to an end and God wants a deeper relationship look at me God wants a deeper relationship with you he says I should tell you that you need to give him time and you need to commit yourself passionately to the things of God mama let me pray for you it's not just because of old age your eye issue is not just because of old age this is a demonic thing that's why God identified you even with the glasses. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Someone came from Kano. 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 Someone came in from Kano. You're the only person from Kano. Kano. This is a family. This is not just one person I'm talking about. Please. Ah, this is a family. You are not the only one that came. In the name of Jesus, Mama, I pray for you that the God of heaven. Do you have a daughter, Mama? Where is she? She's in Abuja. She's in Abuja? Yes. Is she married? Yes. I have two daughters. The first one. The first one, she's married. Have you heard from her? Yes. She's doing well? She's fine. You think so? But she's looking for a job. We have to pray for her okay. because I'm seeing a problem with her marriage. Okay. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let mama have no reason to cry because of what is happening to her children in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Mama, the Lord is renewing your strength. The back pain you used to have in the morning is gone right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Kano, is there a family that came from a family. I know individuals came, but there are at least more than one person. Because this I'm seeing like a family. All of you came from Kano. I don't mean you are based there. You traveled from there to here. Well, I'll pray for you, but um, this is I'm seeing a family. This word is for a family. This word is for a family. This word is for a family. We have to pray. Look at me. That, so that the devil will not kill your potentials. I'm seeing books. And I'm seeing a spirit sitting on it. This is what I'm seeing. Books. And I'm seeing a spirit sitting on it. Father, in the name of Jesus, let there be restoration. I declare the opening of the gates of destiny for you. See, let me tell you tonight. If things are not going right, don't pretend they are going right fight it out here. We are, going, are you getting what I'm saying? Please. This is why God prepared this meeting. Don't come and waste your time. The Lord specifically kept speaking to me that tonight is dedicated for families. No matter how you are doing well, if your family is not doing well, you are not fine. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So don't let anybody just distract you and make it look like you are wasting your time. Hallelujah. Ella, come, let me pray for you so that your mother will not be told that she's sick. Lord, I destroy any yoke of sickness over her mom's life in the name of Jesus. This lady, you that tied something forward. No, 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 this one. Yes, come, 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 come. Just let me pray for you. Is it Gozier or Chigozier? Something that has like an Igbo name it has Gozier in it. I know there's I E Gozier or something like that. Is there anyone like that? Whether I, I don't know if it's your name or son name or something, but I'm saying a Gozier. The Lord is asking me to pray for you, and He's saying He's bringing restoration to your family. In the name of Jesus, He's bringing restoration to your family. Is bringing restoration to your family. What's your name? Eh? Anosie. Okay, I saw something. Was, okay, come, let me pray for you. Where are you coming from? Mina. Mina. Yes. All the way from Mina. Yes. What do you do? I'm a master student. Let me pray for you. 
there are doors that the Lord wants to open for you but it will have to be by prophecy you will not just open like that Father let those doors be open right now by the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ I declare that those doors of limitations are open right now for you in the name of Jesus Jennifer Jennifer I'm hearing the name Jennifer 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 is that your name? you are Jennifer no this is not just this Jennifer I will talk to you but Jenny, anybody other person with the name Jennifer you are Jennifer who else is Jennifer not a name you know alone a name that everybody knows you as Jennifer please don't just stand up and come carelessly think about what we're saying who is you're all Jennifer who is from Kaduna you're from Kaduna I'll pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, lay your hands on your stomach. There will be no death in your families. The sound of death will not be heard. Out! That devil of death. He will leave her family right now. Because I'm seeing that there would have been a lamentation August 7th. But in the name of Jesus, we cancel it by the power of the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit. There will be no death there will be no death. There will be no death. There will be no death in the name of Jesus Christ. Can I pray for you? The Lord is bringing healing. Healing to somebody in your family. Healing to someone in your family. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Your mother is from Kaduna. Your mom is from Kaduna. Who is from Kataf? Zango Kataf. Your mother is from Zango Kataf. Let me pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray that the limitation over this family be lifted right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Adam, is it Adamu? Adamu? There is Adamu. I don't know if it's your name. Son name, Adamu. Adamu. Your name is Adamu. Your son name. Yes, Where are you from? I'm from Kogi State. You are? Kogi State. Kogi State. Where are you coming from? Where are you coming from no. now? A mantle. A mantle. You love God very well. Yes, sir. Are you sure? Yes, sir. If God tells you he wants to use you, will you allow him to use you? Yes, sir. Because there are so many things God wants to do in and through your life. I hear my spirit, the rejected stone has become the chief cornerstone. The rejected stone has become the chief cornerstone. The Lord says, I should tell you that I will do mighty things in and through you. For the stone that was rejected has become the chief cornerstone. The Lord brings a visitation to your life. You will go through series of spiritual experiences. Father, let there be a birthing. Hold my hands. Change him, oh God. The first thing that will happen to you is a circumcision. The pruning of the old. I cast the spirit that stops you from walking with God. Let it leave now. For he will not pour new wine in an old wine skin. I cast that spirit. Give way for the king to come into his life. Please bring him up. Lord, let the prophetic teaching anointing come upon him. Make him a mighty man. Put a hunger and a desire in his heart for your word. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
outside there is somebody i want to speak to i'm seeing an angel of the lord outside towards the extreme back the power of god is going to come upon one person there mightily please let the ushers bring the person i need to speak to the person outside towards the back towards the end part the power of god will come mightily and strong upon one person there For I will make you like Deborah, said the Spirit of God. I will make you a mighty warrior, said the Spirit of God. Today I lift away from your life the distractions. Distractions. The Lord is taking away distractions from your life. Distractions. Seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. So let us therefore lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us and run with perseverance the race hallelujah stand behind her i'm seeing the power of god coming on her i don't know what it is for but the anointing of the spirit is coming strong upon her there is something god is taking out of her family no the usher not even the lady you usher god is taking away something out of your life Hallelujah. Emmanuel, come. The Lord is lifting darkness from your family. The Lord is lifting darkness from your family. Darkness from your family. It must roll away now. It's lifting darkness from your family. Amaka and Adora, come. Come quickly, quickly. The Spirit of the Lord says, I should tell you the feast of new things. The feast of new things. Hold hands together. The feast of new things. The feast of new things. The feast of new things. Ah, he will wipe away that which is of the old. And he will bring you into the new. The Lord says, I should tell you the feast of new things. I am doing a feast of new things. Bringing into your life a feast of new things. A feast of new things. The anointing of the Spirit will make this happen. Let it flow to you right now. And change you. Change you. Change you. Change you. Your father is a police officer. Your dad is a police officer. 
Your dad is a police officer. Your dad is a police officer. Please, where is the person? In Zaria here, not outside of Zaria. A police officer in Zaria here. the Lord with all your heart and the Lord will use you but there are many things that need to be pruned there are distractions in your life distractions your name is Emmanuel and it means God is with you there are distractions little things sway you your life is too emotional to walk with God. You need stability. Therefore, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I impart upon you strength in your spirit, man. Strength. Take it now. The strength of the spirit. It will come upon you strongly. I've laid hands on you. You will never be able to be weak and dwindle around again. And come upon you. Nesitila, come quickly. There are weights that must be broken. The Spirit of God says, Weights, weights, they must be broken. Weights, they must be broken. Cares and weights and worries. Cast your cares before the Lord because the Lord wants to do great things in your life, but there are weights. Wait, wait. There are weights. Oh God, may those weights give way right now. In the name of Jesus. Ken, an angel is standing close to you. And I'm seeing oil being poured upon you. And the Lord is saying, Again, I will visit your family. Again, I will visit your family. Again, I will visit your family. Lord, let that oil be poured upon him for his family. The Lord is saying, again, I will visit your family. Again, I will visit your family. That's what the Lord is saying. Again, I will visit your family. And this time around, it will be with power. Again, I will visit your family. My dear, may the Lord anoint you. Is an anointing that is coming upon you. May the Lord anoint you. You are weak in the spirit. I strengthen you right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. You gave me a brand new song to sing to you. That's why I will lift up my voice and sing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Lord, you took my pain away. Then you give me joy You're my peace, my melody In the center of the storm You gave me a brand new song To sing to you That's why I will lift up my voice And say, yeah, 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 yeah The Lord is giving you beauty for ashes Beauty for ashes, beauty for ashes, and a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Beauty for ashes. There is a woman that came here with a sick child. There is a woman that came here with a sick child.
What's wrong with him? Help her with the mic. No mic. What's wrong with him? Huh? SS. SS. This is not the situation. I'll pray for him, but in fact, this this is a baby. It's not even somebody as old as this. This is somebody within the age range of maybe a small child that is sick. that the Lord wants to heal that person. Go dear. Go dear. Go dear. Come. Your breakthrough has come. Where are you coming from? Samaru. You believe Jesus will touch you right now? You believe that? Do you love Jesus? I love Jesus. And other things. You know what I'm talking about, right? Listen. You have to give God everything. I'm not talking of born again. Everything. Total surrender. Are you getting what I'm saying? There's no one leg in, one leg out. It has to be completely all for him. Hold my hands and let me pray for you. All good, yeah? I'll pray for you. Will you let her go now in the name of Jesus? I see you in the spirit. You will let her go now. I'm speaking to this other lady. Don't worry, she may not be looking at me. I'm not talking to her. Release her family right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I cause darkness darkness over the family I set you free right now in the name of Jesus Christ from every power that is not of God Madam, will, there will be a prayer session and I will pray for your son but let me just lay hands on him since you came out Someone had a dream this morning. You saw me laying hands on you just this morning. Early this morning. I know people have this kind of dream, but someone specifically had that dream this morning. Father, heal this boy in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, look at me. You love Jesus with all your heart. Very much. He will do mighty things through your life. Just be patient. Huh? Now is not the time of manifestation. Now is the time of building. But it is true that he will do mighty things through your life. Hold my hands. Father, do to her what she saw in the dream. In the name of Jesus. Do something to your spirit. It's an awakening that is happening to you. It's an awakening. I break the chains of limitation over you now. I cast those chains. I set them on fire. In the name that is above all names. May those chains be broken. And I separate you from error. There is a spirit of error that can come with zeal when it is misdirected. I separate you from error. You will be circumspect and you will only be accurate. In the name of Jesus. Where is Isaac in Oshrin? Is he around? It's time for you to step into a new level. The Lord is removing something. I'm seeing like a surgery being done on you. There is something that so badly keeps you from rising to the next level. And the Lord says, it's time I prune it. It's a desire, it's an appetite that he's killing because it does not come from him. He wants to do mighty things. Hold my hands. 
kill that appetite, oh God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let that leave. Everything that does not name the name of Christ, may it leave. Come. This gentleman, you, it's time to respond to the dream you had. Come. These are wicked forces of darkness. Tying your life and your destiny down with delay. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I set you free by the power of God. That demonic dream and the experience that, had, that you had there, let it never return again. In the name of Jesus Christ, whatever gives them legal access to your life is sealed and broken by the blood. In the name of Jesus Christ. The last person and then we'll just come, my dear, this lady. No, yes, come. You now, yes. Let no man despise you, for out of you will come a treasure. Let no one despise you. Let no one despise you for out of you will come a treasure the Lord says I should tell you there is this treasure that is hidden in earthen vessels that the excellency power may be of God and not of men come hold my hands there is a fragrance that is coming upon your life from today that will make you uncommon uncommon distinguished for you love the Lord with your whole heart You love the Lord with your whole heart. Father, in the name of Jesus, everything that makes men despise, I curse it. I curse it. Hallelujah. Wow. Acts chapter 3. Turn to your neighbor and say, Are you still here? I just want to charge us a bit welcome everybody all those who came from far and near honor you glad to have you here you will never be the same now peter and john went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour and a certain man lame from birth was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple which is called beautiful to ask arms of them that entered into the temple. Who seen Peter and John. Follow me closely. About to go into the temple. Asked an arm. And Peter fasten, fastening his eyes upon him. With John said. Look on us. And this is the key verse. Verse 5. Let's read together. One to read. And he gave heed unto them expecting to receive something expecting to receive something when he said look on us they paid attention because they were expecting that they were going to receive something as I began to pray and say Lord what would I share with your people the Lord said the only thing I need from them is expectation 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 is a proof of faith expectation is a proof that you trust God hallelujah if you if you tell me you are hungry and I dip my hands in my pocket automatically you begin to have a sign of expectation because you anticipate that I'm bringing out something is that true and so you begin to position yourself to receive and say thank you the only thing God is asking from you tonight is that you'll be expectant expect that sickness to leave your body expect that family captivity to come to an end expect the lord to visit you expect to step into new levels of the anointing expect that no matter what the challenge is the power of god can step into your life it does not take time it only takes the spirit of god 
For where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Where the spirit of the Lord is not, there is no liberty. I want you to know that the spirit of God is in this place tonight. And the only message the Lord asked me to communicate to you is that your heart be expectant. Expectant. Lord, I expect to be healed. I expect that you will wipe my tears. I expect that this situation in my life will change at once. I expect it. I expect it. Do you believe? Do you expect that God will do something in your life? God is already visiting people. You do not imagine the degree of spiritual preparation that goes in to all of our meetings. Talk less of the miracle service. So I want you to know that there is enough grace. There is enough anointing. Hallelujah. Right away we'll begin to pray and I'll just be moving in the anointing and God will minister to us. Please and please let your heart be expectant. That's the only message the Lord asked me to give us tonight. Expectation. Expectation. Expect that that which you wrote in your prayer request will be answered. Expect that that which you came down. See, don't look at the situation. Just be expectant. Be expectant. The greatest enemy to expectation is your past, your history, your track record of failure, your track record of the seeming shortcomings of God. So every time you expect, you say, but I prayed before, but I fasted before. It says, forgetting the things that are behind. Forgetting what happened yesterday or what did not happen yesterday, I press. Everyone say, I press. I press. Hallelujah. Rise up on your feet. We are going to pray. Just for two to five minutes. That's the only message the Lord asked me to bring to us tonight. Expectation. Let there be a, a depth of expectation in your heart. Lift your voice and cry to God. And say, Lord, I am expectant. Pray. Lord, as your power moves and as your spirit is touching men, I am expectant. I came with a hunger. I came for a touch. I came for an encounter. I came with an expectation. Hallelujah. 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 Before we pray, come, Pastor Femi. The Lord says, I should tell you, he's opening you up to a season of wisdom. 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 He's opening you up to strange wisdom. Wisdom. That's what you are receiving. Wisdom. Strong wisdom. He's opening you up to a season of wisdom. That's what you need for the next level of your life. Wisdom. Tremendous wisdom. The wisdom of the spirit. The wisdom of the spirit. The wisdom of the spirit. He's giving you wisdom. He's giving you wisdom. He's giving you wisdom. Lord, I pray that you activate fountains of wisdom in him. Strange order of wisdom. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Wisdom in your decisions. Dimensions of wisdom that you have never seen before. You will make decisions that will accelerate your life. Accelerate ministry. Hallelujah. In one minute, mention everything you came with as a challenge. And say, Lord, the time has come for your grace and your power.
Kaparada balada baka prende gete bela debo. Shaprando brati setele bagaria da balada bako prondo soto brati shivara. Shembrata kapara kata balada baka ria da balada ba. Shalom, Shalom, Jehovah, Shalom, Shalom. You're welcome in this place. Shalom, Shalom, my Father, Shalom, Shalom. You're welcome in this place. Shalom, shalom. Jehovah, shalom, shalom. You're welcome in this place. Shalom, Jehovah, shalom. Shalom, shalom. Jehovah, shalom. Shalom. You're welcome in this place. One more time. Shalom, yeah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. We're starting tonight with individuals that God is giving them breakthroughs. Every single one of those individuals will come under the anointing of the Spirit. At the count of three. Just those individuals. One, two, three. Now, now, take it. Take it. Take it. Take it now. That breaker anointing. I release it right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. All the ones separated for breakthroughs right now. Inside and outside. I release that breakthrough anointing. That breakthrough anointing. Right now, that breakthrough anointing right now, it comes like a mighty rushing wind. The breakthrough anointing, the breakthrough unction, enough of that level, enough of that dimension. I speak it, I declare it, I prophesy it, and I release it. Take it from your belly out of your belly let it gush like living waters out of your belly that breaker anointing in the name of Jesus out of your belly that breaker anointing breakthroughs 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 I end the struggle. I end the struggle. I end the struggle by the breakthrough anointing. I end the struggle right now. I end the struggle right now. All over the building. I end the struggle right now. Shaka ba 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 ba. Shaka ta ba 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 ba. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Everyone lay your hands on your stomach. Just lay your hands on your stomach. Hallelujah. Lay your hands on your stomach. He said for out of your belly. Something will happen to some people right now. Out of your belly. Just keep your hands there. Father in the name of Jesus. Where are the ones you are separating? Spiritual breakthroughs. Right now. Right now. And right now from your belly. From your belly. From your belly. From your belly. In the name of Jesus. Out of your belly. Let it flow. Let it flow. Living waters. Living waters. Living waters. New dimensions. Living waters. Skatata kapata. Rekete tekete. Bekata taboskata. Embrata kata. Shekete lekes. From your innermost being. From your innermost being. From your innermost being. From your innermost being. A busting thought of new wine. A busting thought of new wine. A busting thought of new wine. A busting thought. Hallelujah. 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 There are people here right now. Listen. You came here because you are confused. There is no direction. You are trusting God for direction. You have prayed but there is nothing to do. You need direction desperately. Lift your hands. Lord I pray. Wherever they are right now. By the light of the spirit. My father locates them. Receive direction right now. Receive direction right now. Marital direction. Academic direction. Receive direction. Receive direction. I put it in your spirit. By the light of God. I put it in your spirit. By the light of God. I put it in your spirit. By the light of God. By the light of God. By the illumination of the spirit. Direction. You will hear that voice. You will hear that voice. You will hear that voice. Saying this is the way. You will hear that voice. Saying this is the strategy. You will hear that voice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. The Lord wants to destroy marital delay. This is what is happening right now. Marital, just keep your hands. Just do what I'm telling you to do. Hallelujah. Now hear me. There are people here who God wants to release them into their marital destiny. But there are horns and powers that has kept them down. You may think it's finances. Or you may think it's this and that. But the enemy has done this. Lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus. I release you right now. I release you. I release your family. I release your sisters. That power that has held your marital destiny. Hear the voice of the Lord. That power that has stopped marriage in your family. I speak in the name of Jesus. Be loose right now. 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 Hallelujah. 
Now, lift your hands. I'm seeing in the spirit a tree without fruit. And so I know the Lord wants me to destroy barrenness. 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 There is someone who came here with that situation. I don't know if it's a couple or somebody. You are expecting a miracle desperately. Let me have that one person come out. I'm going to pray for everybody right now, but we need to break that yoke right now. We need to break that yoke right now. There are families tied down. There are families tied down. When you identify that person, the person can come out. Lift your hands, let me pray. No, the Lord wants the family to come out first. Come out first. Celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Where are you coming from, sir? Kaduna. Kaduna? Yes, sir. Where's your wife? She left my house October 26th. We don't have the courage and she packed her things and she left. We were married for eight years, no child. You've been married for eight years no child. with no child. And so because of the frustration, she left. Do you know where she is? She's in Kaduna in her mother's house. Why did she leave? Because Look at how the devil steps in to destroy families. Eight years and is leaving because there is no child. But are you still in touch? Well... The church tried to call her, she didn't answer, so I left her alone. I was just praying that God should just intervene. So a friend of mine invited me from Kaduna to come to this program. Where is the friend? Friend, come. She I need to pray for you. May God bless you. Let's celebrate the friend. Hallelujah. These are the kind of useful and relevant friends that God should bring in your life. Friend, where are you? May God bless you. You are a good friend for inviting him to come and receive breakthrough. Ogasa, do you believe your wife will come back? Yes, sir. You want her back? Yes. I'm going to pray for you. Your wife will return back. Amen. Forget about what has happened. God will give you two boys, two girls. Hallelujah. Let me pray for you, sir. You are a good man and you love God. Not only that, what do you do? I work in an electronics company, Samsung. So when we had this issue of this marriage, they have to let go of me. But I have my own personal business in Kaduna, which I, know. I God established. Is helping you. Yes, this marriage has destroyed too many things in your life. You've lost money. You've lost a lot of people. Even cars. Because I'm seeing somebody that really used to be blessed. What is like things are going down. The Lord is going to restore you. Do you believe that? You believe that? Yes, sir. Therefore, what God has joined, the Bible says, Let no man put asunder. You need to be delivered. Right? There is a spirit that is making these things happen. You are a good man. You will be delivered right now. I curse that spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. I release your destiny right now in the name of Jesus I call forth your wife into your life and I open the fountains of fruitfulness the Lord showed me two boys two girls and I release them to your life this power that has tied you down and tied your family in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare that it is released right now in the name of Jesus. I'm holding your hands and with these hands may your business jack up beyond that which you have ever known. And I pray in the name of Jesus that the Lord will restore your fortune and he will bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Friend, come. 
Where are you from? Kaduna too? Zaria. Zaria, yeah. yeah. You came alone? Yes. No, I came with a friend. What would you want the Lord to do in your life? Marital breakthrough. Marital breakthrough? Yes. What does that mean? Marriage or health yes. in your marriage? Marriage. Marriage. When? This year. You believe it? Yes. Or you're just saying it? You have already spoken the word and it's happening. Let me pray for you. Father, you anointed us to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To appoint unto them. And in the name of Jesus, I declare that before this year runs out, your husband comes to you and may you be happily married. You will marry a godly man. May you marry a blessed man. One who will love you and fear the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you, sir. Now lift your hands and let me pray. I'm praying for barrenness. I don't care what represents barrenness in any area of your life. Lift your hands. Barrenness can mean unfruitfulness in any aspect. He says, Naaman was the captain of the Syrian army, but he was leprous. It was an area of barrenness. Barrenness is that aspect of your life that is not productive. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you right now. Lift your hands. Father, there are people who like a vine have refused to bear fruit in different areas. Others want to bear fruit, but the enemy has stopped it. I pray for you right now. Every power that is sitting on your fruitfulness. Where are those people who barrenness have held their lives? Where are those people? In the name of Jesus, let fire come upon you now. Let fire come upon you now. I destroy the hold of barrenness. Everywhere in this building, I break the chains of barrenness. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This row, can you lift your hands? Just this row. Just this row. Just keep your hands lifted. I see a wind blowing through this row. Barrenness be destroyed from the back to the front. Back to the front. Back to the front. There is no hiding. Back to the front. There are many people in this room. I break it right now. I break it right now. Right now to the back. From the back to the front. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone under any influence of unfruitfulness. Shake it. Shake it. Shake it. Shake it. Right to the back in the name of Jesus. Be set free. Hallelujah. Now lift your hands. I want to minister deliverance to the oppressed. This sign shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. When the spiritual limitation is taken away, then your life will move forward. What will happen tonight is not just for you, but for every family you represent. So there are people who will come under the influence of the anointing to be delivered. Not just for themselves, but for their families. And the families you represent lift your hands father in the name that is above all names i'm praying there are spirits sitting on families and the destinies of people appearing to people in dreams and visions and corrupting your purposes for their lives and lord it's time for them to go because this is mount zion now therefore i speak to every foul spirit 
every devil of darkness every yoke every territorial power that sits across territories I speak in the name of Jesus by the authority of the Lord Jesus and I come under an apostolic anointing I bring every spirit under arrest and I command that you will live at the count of three now at the count of three I want you to shout the name Jesus and they must leave you one two three second spirit husband every territorial power ancestral spirits that tie people and families come out now come out now come out now come out of God's people in the name of Jesus bring them out in the name of Jesus I cost those powers I cost those powers I cost those powers I cost those powers hallelujah lift your hands lift your hands I see spirits that come to people in night visions and dreams make intercourse with them and destroy their lives keep those hands lifted Lord where are those people let the sword of judgment find them now let the sword of judgment find them now find the sword of judgment Sisters, lift your hands. A spirit will prefer to oppress a sister than a brother. Because with one sister, there are many people that can become victims. Not because of immorality or anything. It's just the nature of the compelling character of women. I pray right now. Anyone here, whether you know it or not, that is under the influence of any spirit that is not of God. I pray and stretch my hands right now. In the name of Jesus, let fire come upon that spirit. Let fire come upon that spirit. Come upon that spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is speaking to me that there are people here that start things but never finish. There are families that start things. You've been building a house for 10 years and will never complete it. Lift your hands. The finisher's anointing is going to come upon a few people right now. That grace to start and finish at the count of three is coming upon you for your destiny. Coming upon you for your family. Receive it right now. One, two, three. The finisher's anointing breaking the course of delay. The finisher's anointing breaking the yoke of delay. Projects that have refused to finish. Projects that have refused to finish. Hallelujah. I hear the chains 
front now for prayer inside and outside it's time to pray for the sick instrumentalists give us very anointed tunes worship team help us while that is happening if you've not written your prayer request do that quickly and in case you think you need to add something to it please don't stop playing while you're seated here the power of God is visiting you so be in the spirit inside and outside no matter how far you are connect in the spirit you can call your loved ones to quickly send in their requests there is a God that answers prayer Please make way for those who are coming out. Jesus is a healer. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. All of you who have come out I want you to wave goodbye to your infirmities and mean business with it hallelujah praise the Lord I want you to believe that Jesus still heals and he will heal you right now hallelujah we'll be very fast about it yep. just give her a chair Hallelujah. All of you standing here believe that Jesus will heal you right now. He will give us a sign. And the sign will be from one of you. Something will happen to one of you right now. And that will give us the sign of the stirring of the waters. power of God will come strongly upon one of you right now when that happens then it will allow us to pray for the sick right now thank you Jesus father let there be miracles I see miracles everywhere be discerning be spiritual Miracles everywhere. I see miracles everywhere. Right now, right now, miracles everywhere. I see miracles everywhere. Miracles everywhere. Right now, right now, right now. miracles everywhere.
Tell him in the name of Jesus. He will work well now. And that witchcraft attack will leave. Ask him if he believes. And tell him to go. What's this? The medical report. Okay. Father, this is why you anointed us. Every power that is not of God, I set you free from it right now. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, you will walk normally by yourself. I release upon you the power that comes in the name of the Lord Jesus. For those of you who have never seen a miracle, watch closely what happens now. Oh, hallelujah. I feel the healing anointing coming upon you. Stomach bloated. Jesus sets you free. I come in the name of the Lord. Tell him to hold my hands. Tell him to hold my hands. Release him. Release him. Walk. Come. Come. Tell him to come. Jesus Christ. Baba, tell him from today no witchcraft power will paralyze and keep him again. Appreciate God. Go back to your seat. God bless you. Oh, oh, oh.
Because of guitar, this is witchcraft. The devil does not want you to play on to the glory of God. Oh, you, you want play, to play for a club now, this hand will be healed. The devil is a liar. Amen. Hallelujah. That's how he keeps play robbing guitar. the church of potential people who worship God. Praise the Lord. You believe Jesus will heal you? All this. Look at me. I'm going to pray for you, and the power of God will come upon you. You believe that? And then you move your whole hand and begin to try it. Say after me, Jesus. I believe. I believe. You're the son of the living God. You're the son of the living God. Right now. Right now. Life to my hands. Life to my hands. Say it again. Life to my hands. Life to my hands. Look at what is happening to his hands. Cannot move them. Go ahead and begin to move it. Go ahead, begin to move it. Move it by yourself. Go ahead, move it. Move it. Start moving your fingers. Look at this. He couldn't move his fingers. Look at this. Go ahead. Go ahead. Do what I'm doing. Hold it like this. Go ahead. Keep moving. Come on, give Jesus praise. Couldn't use this at all. Couldn't even move. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare that these hands become perfected. Can you see how the hands are? I mean, so stunned, you cannot even use it. Keep doing it. Keep shaking it. The power has gone and your hand recovers completely. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. Give Jesus praise.
Jesus. Come now, praise His name. Oh, you saints of God. One time. If we call to Him, we belong to us. We belong to Him. We belong to us. We lift our hands. We lift our hands. Come now, praise His name. Now, oh, you saints of God. All the way, all the way, we go to hell. Hail your name, day by day. All the way, all the way, we go to hell. What the Lord has done, He has destroyed the works of Satan. He has given us victory. That's why we sing, Oh, say, yeah. Have you heard what the Lord has done? He has destroyed the works of Satan. He has given us the victory. That's why we sing, Oh, say, yeah. I say 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 yeah. I Jesus of Satan. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please, if, if you are here to submit your prayer request, we are going to give God a hot, hot praise as we pray on this. Three to 
five minutes of hot praise dance out every nonsense out of your life. This name was Worship team, are you ready? This name I like that guy. Mind. That's ah no no. no. This name is Tima. Hallelujah. Go ahead, Steve. This name is Tima. The bank is in Tima. Say. Come on. Say. and begin to just pray in the spirit unto you that answers prayer will all flesh come oh God we have come before the mighty one I like you to pray there is nothing that our God cannot do there is nothing he cannot do
says unto you that answers prayers will all flesh come father this request represent the cries of your people this request represent the desires of your people this request represent the challenges of your people this request represents the obstacles that are standing on our path to destiny these requests threaten the advancement of your kingdom in our lives we pray in the name that is above all names that every request here be turned into a testimony in the name of the lord jesus christ no matter how impossible the situation is oh god i pray that one by one, one by one, they will come and testify of your goodness. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Already for some, I heard that Victor's wife that we prayed for has been rushed to the hospital. Labor has started for her. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This is a very prophetic moment. Please, everybody inside and outside, don't let anyone distract you now. Lift your hands as we speak. Hallelujah. I love this part of the meeting because this is where everybody gets to be blessed. The power of prophecy and its ability to enter your life and change things. Please, I want you to believe. Please, I want you to believe. No matter how far you are inside and outside, I want you to believe. Hallelujah. Everything that represents limitation in your life. Everything that has stood as a limitation against your life and your destiny. I come in the name of the Lord God, the Lord God Almighty, and I declare that in this month of May, may that limitation be lifted up your life. May that limitation be lifted up your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you. Whatever has stopped the helpers of your destiny from locating where you are, whatever wrong advice, whatever wrong impression has been given to them about you and your family that has made them refuse to come to your aid. Makata katakata, seketeketepaka, emproto seketelekata, mankratos katabalatapa, rebeketeketeketepeledebos. I call them into your life now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I call the helpers of your destiny. Into your life now. I call the helpers of your destiny. Into your life now. I call the helpers of your destiny. Into your life now. Hallelujah. I pray for you. This is the season 
where wisdom will be required for you to move to the next level. Listen. The Bible says through wisdom a house is built and by understanding it is established. Through knowledge are the rooms filled with every treasurable thing. Wisdom for many of us is the key to the next level. And this is not human wisdom. It's not wisdom by scientific calculation. Strategies that are revealed of the spirit. Strategies that can take you in one day to realms that years have not brought you. I pray the wisdom of the spirit may it come upon you now in the name of Jesus Christ. The wisdom for the next dimension. The wisdom for the next dimension. The wisdom for the next dimension. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. One of the keys to a life of stagnation is confusion, lack of direction. There's nothing as terrible as a man who is clueless about what to do. It can be frustrating when you are clueless. You are at the middle of an ocean and you don't know what to do. But there is the spirit of counsel and mind. The, the dimension of the operation of the spirit that comes and speaks peace to you in the name that is above all names. I pray for you that every decision you need to make every direction that you need to take for this second half of your life to truly be the year of the rain I release upon you that dimension of the spirit of counsel and might marital direction financial direction academic direction career direction no more confusion no more confusion no more confusion hallelujah I pray for you part of the keys to stepping into the blessings of the Lord is the ability for your eyes to see opportunities Hagar listen Hagar was in a place it was a desert but there was water her eyes could not see it. but when the angel of the Lord appeared unto her suddenly she saw water I pray you have been passing what can bless you and you have not been seeing it in this month of May, the anointing that opens the eyes of men to opportunities that can bless you. I release it upon you now. I release it upon you now. Where men see obstacles, may you see opportunities. Where men see stumbling blocks, may you see stepping stones. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says, God has not given us the spirit of fear. Fear has kept many people from moving forward. Fear of everything. Fear of death. Fear of failure. Fear of taking action. Fear of moving. Even when God says move, you say I'm afraid. Start that business, I'm afraid. Take a step to marry, I'm afraid do this i'm afraid move on further i'm afraid i pray for you in the name of jesus every manifestation of fear every manifestation of fear that has kept your ego on the line that will not allow you soil your hand in destiny to make progress that keeps you from being afraid every manifestation of fear that gives you a feeling of being embarrassed to take a step I cause that fear now. I cause that fear now. I cause that fear now. When they got to the Red Sea, they were afraid. And when Moses went before the Lord, he said, tell the people to move forward. The signs don't go before you. They follow you. 
you will have to take a step as a sign that you trust God. Take the step and die taking it. Let it be that it was God that killed you. There is no man that took a step in the name of the Lord that did not return with a testimony. For some may trust in horses. Others may trust in chariots. But for us, we trust in the name of the Lord. And everything we do in the name of the Lord, he said, whatsoever you do in word and in deed, do it in the name of the Lord. I pray for you again. Fear has stopped millionaire businesses from starting up. Fear has stopped people from applying in places, high places. They think they are not qualified. Fear has stopped many of us. Fear has stopped you from starting the building project. Who said you are too young? So long as God gives you the signal. There are some of us, all of us are adults in our house, but our parents cannot boast of even a simple bungalow because of fear. You have 10,000. Go and buy a trip of sand and pour it on the ground and leave it there. Tell the devil I'm coming. Look, let me tell you, you will never break through in life till you take the attitude of if I perish, I perish. I pray the boldness, the audacity, the strength, the audacity to ride through without exhaustion, to ride through without fear, I release it upon you right now. I release it upon you right now. I pray for your academics. Shekete palabata. The ten times better anointing. Ma teke 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 ta. Shekete lepa. The distinguishing anointing. I release it upon you right now. I release it upon you right now. Listen. Anyone here or any family here that the devil is eyeing for death that is saying you will not see the next month or the end of this year I declare by the mystery of the blood the last card the hallmark of God's victory I judge the manifestation of death over your life I judge the manifestation of death over your family you will travel out and come back safe no armed robber will get you on the road no terrorist will attack you on the road when others say there is a casting down it will never be your testimony for you it will be that there is a lifting up in the name of jesus i pray over your finances the grace to pay the price now and to pay the price early for a glorious financial future i release it every spirit of laziness every spirit of carelessness every spirit of lukewarmness every inertia every reluctance to begin to take appropriate financial decisions especially for the brothers i cause it to his root now in the name of jesus christ i pray for those trusting god for a miracle job I tell you the truth when the hand of the Lord upon you is upon you there will be a door that is open some of you are standing in for yourself and some for your loved ones I pray in the name that is above all names may God give them supernatural jobs jobs that they will be proud of in the name of Jesus and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren It's one thing to be rich is one thing to be blessed but it's another thing to be honored honor is not something that money can buy i pray for you that mantle of honor that makes you distinguished and rewarded everywhere you go i release it upon you right now your superiors will honor you your contemporaries will honor you your subordinates will honor you even your enemies will honor you in the name of Jesus Christ and I pray for everything that has died or is dying here I don't care what it is projects that have died 
ideas that have died dreams that have died i speak to you in the name of jesus come back to life come back to life visions that have died assignments that have died passions that have died strengths that have died i call it back to life in the name of jesus every voice you have heard that has killed your dreams every voice you have heard that has killed your potentials the voice of your past the voice of your failure the voice of mediocre the voice of limitation i silence those voices from your life i silence those voices from your life i pray for every ministry represented here greater grace and greater glory greater grace and greater glory i pray for every business represented here greater grace and greater glory i pray for every job represented here greater grace and greater glory i pray for every family represented here greater grace and greater glory i pray for every destiny represented here greater grace and greater glory greater grace and greater glory greater grace and greater glory the bible says thou anointest my head with oil and it makes my cup to run over there is an anointing that comes upon your head that translates into increase in your life thou anointed my head with oil and that oil makes my cup my source of supply to run over i pray for you the anointing that will give you wisdom the anointing that will give you creativity the anointing that will give you ideas insight concepts strategies for wealth i release it upon your life in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for you. In a name that is above all names. Every habit. Every issue. Every challenge. Every weight on your life. That is eating up your Christian integrity. That is eating up your walk with God. You love God but there are weights in your life that keep drawing you back to the way of sin i pray for you the hand of the lord lifts you out of that nonsense the grace of god picks you out of that limitation grace to say no to every appearance of evil grace to say no to everything that is ungodly in the name of jesus christ i pray a special prayer for our brothers i curse in your life the spirit of irresponsibility one more time i curse from your life and your vicinity every spirit that refuses you from rising as a man that you are that entitlement mentality that makes you think someone else is responsible for your success i curse that mindset in the name of jesus from today i release upon you grace grace to rise and take up the challenge of manhood in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you you will not need to defend yourself the Lord God Almighty will be your defense the Lord will anoint you in such a way that even your enemies will walk towards your progress in the name of Jesus I prophesy restoration for everything you have lost restoration 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 in the name of the lord jesus and i pray for you a new dimension in the spirit a new level of prayer grace a new level of word grace a new dimension of encounters with the spirit of god where you are becoming lukewarm where you are losing the initial standard of your christian experience where you are already bending bending against the things that would make you powerful i pray for a restoration for you where you have lost the voice of the spirit i command that you be to hear his voice again where you have lost zeal for the house of god i command a restoration for you in the name of the lord jesus christ and i pray for you all through the remaining part of may into june let it be a month of testimonies for you beginning from tonight 
in the name of Jesus Christ. All those who have been looking for you to bless you, may this be the season they find you. All those who have received instructions from God to hold your hands and lift you up with no strings attached, but have not been able to find you, I pray. Listen, listen. Samuel had already been ordained. I mean, Saul ordained to be a king. But he needed to find Samuel. And they kept searching and he could not find Samuel. Until by the wisdom of God, they were able to find him. You can be one anointing away from the next level of your life. You can be one prophetic impartation away. You can be one destiny helper away. I pray again for you. Whoever has been looking for you, like the lost ass of Samson, of, of Saul, whoever has been looking for you to bless you and has not found you, may this be the season they find you. In the name of Jesus Christ. And finally, I pray for you. Nothing will rob your joy this month. This will be... The month of June will be for you a month of joy and laughter. In the name of Jesus Christ. Before miracle service next month. Most of all your prayer requests would have been turned into testimonies. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. My day. Hallelujah. Now, keep standing, everybody. You're here and you need to return back to Jesus Christ. Keep standing, everyone. You've heard the word of the Lord and you know that you need to make it right with Jesus. Maybe this is the first time you are running to Jesus genuinely to commit your life to Him. Or you've once given your life to Jesus and you've seen that you are derailing and you need to make it right tonight. We will not end this meeting without giving you an opportunity to make Jesus Lord of your life or rededicate your life. Wherever you are, make your way to the front right now. We have one minute for this. God bless you. God bless you as you come. God bless you as you come. Don't wait for anybody to be the first to come. Make your way. God bless you. God bless you. They are coming inside and outside. Celebrate them, Koinonia. God bless you as you come. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. God bless you as you come. Don't be ashamed. He will give you a new beginning. And he will supply grace. That you will go higher and higher. Higher and higher. Keep coming. Young and old, keep coming. Run to Jesus. Keep coming. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Don't sit back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for coming to make a decision for Jesus. Just raise your right hand and repeat after me consciously and from the depth of your heart. You're not reciting a poem. This is, this is a confession that brings salvation unto you. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I declare from today that you are my Savior and you are my Lord. I receive of your life. I receive of your spirit. And I declare that from today, my sins are washed away. I am a brand new person. The hand of God is upon me. I receive grace to live the victorious Christian life. In the name of Jesus Christ, everything that is not of God, I take authority over it. I receive grace from God to live a victorious Christian life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. I want to congratulate you for making this decision. It's the best decision you can make. This decides your eternal destiny. Hallelujah. Now, I'd like you to follow the gentleman waving his hands. They will have your details. They will welcome you more warmly. And then, we'll communicate to you through them. God bless you. This way. 
Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.